and welcome to this video. For those of you who don't already know, I am my first year undergrad at the University of Warwick, otherwise known as Warwick Uni. Woohoo! Take a shot every single time I say Warwick in this video because I will be saying it a lot. If you can already tell by the title, today in this video I will be talking to you about my experiences as a fresher at this uni. Initially, this video was meant to be a compilation of my memories from first year for my friends and family to watch, but then I decided I'm gonna be helpful to all of you potential Warwick students out there and give you the tips, the tricks, the tea that I wish I would have known before I came to this uni. Now obviously because of Miss Rona, Coronavirus! we don't like her. I will only be experiencing two terms of three so I can't really give any advice on exam season because I won't be doing any exams. <laughs> but other than that, I feel like I'm pretty knowledgeable on what Warwick is about and what Warwick is like as a uni. So hopefully by the end of this video, you you'll know if Warwick is for you. So first things first, accommodation. Now, before you even get to the uni, you have to decide on your uni home. I was fortunate enough to stay in the fantastic, the amazing, the almighty Roots Accommodation. I'm gonna spill the tea on my account. In Freshers Week, everyone will ask you for your name, and obviously you reply with your name, and then they'll ask you which accommodation are you staying in. And if you say Roots, you will get one of two responses. You're either gonna get A, Hey, that's sick of why to Sesh, yeah? Or B, Girl, I feel so sorry for you. Have you got AIDS? No. No, I don't have AIDS but my roommate does, no I'm joking. I've spoken to my friends in other unis and I've heard that basically in every uni there's that crackhead to come. We're that crackhead to come. But despite this, I love, okay, love is a bit much, if I'm honest, but I had so, so, so much fun in Roots. Like, okay, yes, I did end up having a rash every single time I entered that bloody kitchen. And yes, I did end up getting peer pressured into going on night out instead of finishing my essay. And yes, I ended up having a fire alarm every other day because some stupid ass doesn't know how to make toast at 4 a.m. Not going out like this one. I'm on the thousand words. setting up. Fire alarm, can you please okay, right stop? Hell, you're a terrible human being. Die. <laughs> but I live five minutes away from every single lecture and I met the best people who I now call my family. Aww. Like, it's so easy to make friends in Roots and there's always good vibes. You'd think living with 16 people, you'd hate at least one person. Well, in my case, I loved every single strangely good looking weirdos I lived with, okay? I love them all. Shout out to K Block Top Floor. And girl, our prices are crazy. We only had to pay. 99 pounds a week so if price is a priority for you which it should be because student life root saves you a lot of pee and okay no we don't have an ensuite and honestly i'm really extra and i really wanted one because like the thought of sharing butt surfaces with other people really grossed me out but now that i've been through it stop being a pussy it's not that bad okay like you have a sink and a mirror in your room and that's honestly all you need so it's calm gonna be fine. There's 16 of us all together and we had to share four toilets and three showers and I've never had to wait for any of them because in uni you're going to have different timetables and different activities. It's going to be fine. What I will say is, and this applies to every account, especially if you live in Roots, if it doesn't need to be in the fridge or freezer, keep it in your room. I'm talking about your pots and pans, your spoons, your ketchup, your bread. If you don't want it used, eaten or stolen, put it in your room and keep it it there. Lock the door. Because although you love your flatmates, you will end up interrogating every single one of them to find out who finished your olive oil or who ate your last egg. 
Rudy. Also, on moving day, go in early so you can get the top shelf and the fridge and freezer because I don't know why this is common, but apparently it happens every single year. Someone will always be incapable of screwing on the lid of the milk or placing it on the shelf upright and milk always ends up getting spilled everywhere. And who has to deal with that? The idiot who got the bottom shelf. If I'm honest, the vibe of each accommodation will differ depending on who's staying there that year. Please be open-minded when you go into your comm. If you do end up paying where you live or hating the people who you live with, it's not the end of the world. You will end up finding your people, finding your group through societies, through your course. So it's all going to be fine no matter where you live. <laughs> like this during Freshers Week, then did you even have it? Basically, I think I'm sick and I have no more voice. I sound like a man who's been smoking. I'm gonna die, but I'm gonna try and hack it with paracetamol, so... Wish me luck, friends. Uh. I'ma tell you this. Your immune system will be tested. And 99% of the time, it will fail you. However, even though your chances of getting Freshers Week are really high, my advice to you is during Freshers Week, get out of your room and explore. Explore the whole of campus. Because every single day, there will be an event. Everywhere. In the SU, in the piazza, there'll be free food. And at night, there's always going to be an event in the copper rooms, which is basically like the university club slash bar everyone gets all wild and party you can also purchase the freshers pass which gives you access to every single event during that week however not all of the events are going to be worth spending your precious money on so choose wisely definitely check out the sports fair and societies fair because that's where you'll find all the extra things that warwick can offer you uni is all about finding yourself and the societies fairs are a good place to start you will meet a lot of people during Freshers Week. It's actually exhausting. Like, I'm a really social person and even my social battery drained. I'ma tell you now, you're not going to remember everyone's names, but remember to be nice to everyone you see because you're going to end up bumping into them on campus. The biggest event during Freshers Week is the foam party. Everyone had advised us not to go to it because it will ruin your clothes, your shoes, your health. And I needed to see it for myself. And now that I have, don't go to it. Okay, let me set the scene. A packed, sweaty room full of wild teenagers blinded by foam and slippery floor. You can't breathe, you can't move because the people behind you are elbowing their way into the front just so they can get a bit of foam on their face so that they can look cool on their Instagram stories. The people in front of you are drowned in foam, fighting for their lives to find the exit. I was in there five seconds into the foam and I saw 10 panic attacks and a girl being trampled on. You lost your whole flat. I, mean, I lost my whole flat. I don't know where they are. Oh my god. What is this? Bro? Literally. Oh my god. I'm literally. <laughs> People died and they're. I ain't going back here. I can't. Real talk. Real yeah, talk. yeah, what? I actually couldn't breathe. So. <laughs> I had to walk away. <laughs> it's just crazy. It's just madness. I just don't do it to yourself. If you are curious like me, then fair enough, go ahead. But I'm preparing you now. It's crazy. Now, if you're not big on the whole wild nights out or downing drinks, that's fine, okay? Because there were definitely nights during Freshers Week where we just wanted to chill as a flat. We just put good music on, played some card games. Like, my point is during Freshers Week, there's going to be an activity for anyone and everyone. Your Freshers Week is only going to be as good as you make it to be. And I feel like that's representative of Warwick life in general. You can be as academic or as social as you choose to be, but make the most of it. Go out and explore and just have fun.
Warwick has over 250 societies. That means whatever you think you're interested in, there's probably going to be a society for it. I remember going to the societies fair thinking like, I'm in an American movie. There's everything there, you know? You can do cheerleading, you can do cocktail society. There's even Quidditch society. Without the broomstick and the magic. There's TikTok society now. Okay, anyway, moving on. So my advice to you is already think about what you like before you get to the uni. So in the societies fair, you already know what you're kind of looking for. Before I came to uni, I already did my research because I wanted to do hip hop at uni because I've never been in a dance team before and I found Echo and Echo looked really cool. So I definitely wanted to find Echo during the societies fair. My other advice to you is once you find out your interests, narrow it down to three because when I went to the societies fair, a lot of things interested me. I wanted to do public speaking and debate and cheerleading but the truth is once you're in a society you kind of have to stay committed you have to remember you're in university to do your degree and you have very limited time during the week being in a society in uni is nothing like lunchtime clubs in secondary school you have initiations and circles and dinners and rehearsals and other events and most of them cost a lot of money and happen every week the more societies you join the more broke you're going to be. So I briefly mentioned circles. Circling is a tradition of Warwick. I can't really explain it, but it is an experience. Honestly, whenever my friends visit me, I want them to experience circling because it's just so weird. Everyone sits in a circle within the society. You play drinking games and there's chants. No one tells you the rules, so then you kind of have to pick up on hints and find out for yourself. If it reaches you and you're fresher, you don't know anything, you end up having to down your pine. And so that's why freshers always end up getting really, really drunk. If you end up on a sports team or a sports society, you're definitely going to do circling every Wednesday in the copper rooms. But I'm pretty sure that most societies do them. There's always a ridiculous theme that you have to follow, otherwise there will be a consequence. You have to dress up all the time, which is why circling in the long term is really expensive because there's just things that you won't own. The theme will be like dress up as a snack and you always have to get this special drink during circling called purple. I swear it's not even purple. I don't actually know what's in it. I only get it because it's a thing and I don't want to be punished by the second years. Holler at me if you actually know what's inside purple because I want to know what I've been consuming for the past two terms. I think it's like free beer. It's not that bad. I really really want to go into depth about circling and like show you what it's like but during my first circle it was with Surf Society and like the majority of them were third years. I pulled out my phone so I could like video it because it was just just so weird. Anyway, so if you put out your phone, this happens. So they just point at you and be like, and that just really scared me because they're all old and like scary. Luckily for me, I didn't get a consequence because like someone passed out on the other corner and like got distracted and like forgot about me. I can't really explain the rules because I don't want to get beaten up. And also it just ruins the fun, you know? I think the fun of it is like trying to figure out for yourself. It's a really fun experience and I really encourage you to try it. Now I'll talk to you about the midweek mayhem, that is pop. This happens every Wednesday after circling. You can choose not to go circling because some people don't like circling or just prefer to be with their friends and their flatmates instead of with societies. With pop, you either love it or hate it. I personally love it because I like the cheesy music that they play with the help of, you know, a little body coke. And you can easily have the best time of your life. But some people think that it's the worst event ever created. Mainly because they play the same music in the same place playlist in the same order every week. Another Warwick event is school days which is basically pop on a Saturday. I think it happens every five weeks. Anyway everyone just wears sexy school shirts and ties. I think for both pop and school days at midnight they play like this song. I think it's from Baywatch. All the guys like take off their shirts and like spin it around their heads. So if pop or school days just isn't your thing it's worth popping in at 11.59 just to see the view. Sometimes it's not good but most of the time it won't disappoint.
Okay, so now for some advice. My number one advice for you would be to be yourself. Like I said, you're going to meet a lot of people. Everyone's going to be on the same page and try to make friends. So whilst you're there being friendly and trying to get people to like you, make sure you stay true to yourself, okay? Because you're in uni for you. Always put yourself first. To be fair, if you're loud and annoying like me, give it like two or three days before you really unleash the beast. But I'm pretty sure like everyone got comfortable pretty quickly. Just don't be crazy straight away. Give it a little time, a little mystery, you know? Number two, if you want to be a hoe, then you do you, boo, but own it. In uni, no one actually cares whether you're a virgin or not. But I'm gonna tell you this, Warwick is a campus uni. So this means that if you slept with someone that you pulled from pop, the person sitting next to you in your lecture the next day is probably their best friend. The person lining up behind you in your grocery store is probably their flatmate. My point is, it's a small world, okay? So if you're gonna be a bad bee, then be a smart one. Use protection. Also, don't be surprised if everyone knows. Word goes round in a campus uni. Last but not least, explore. This means explore your surroundings, explore around your degree, explore your societies, explore your options. University is supposed to be a place where you find yourself and that's not going to happen if you just stay in your room or stay in the library all year long. One thing I will say about Warwick is as well as clubbing in other cities like Coventry and Lem, I also advise you to go there during the daytime as well because I feel like it's so easy to stay on campus. We call it the Warwick bubble. Warwick Warwick is in the middle of nowhere. Everything that we need to survive off is there. Like we have our Tesco, we have our Roots grocery store, and bars and we have Pret on campus. We have our own little city, but I think it's more fun to explore your surroundings. Obviously put your degree first, but make the most of your first year. Learn new skills, make connections and make friends for life. But most importantly, have fun. In my time in Warwick, I've already experienced things I know I will treasure forever. And I know that the friends I have now are friends for life. I say Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And I'm only in first year, so I'm so excited for the years to come. So if you've applied to Warwick, I hope this video helped. Good luck and I hope to see you soon. Peace out!